All right, today we're gonna to talk about how to get people to connect you to people. Something like that, right? Yeah. Let's go. All right, firstly, we all need to be connected to people that we don't know some of the time, right? Especially in the business world, we're always asking to be connected to uh, in an individual, a company, uh, you know, whether it's trying to get an employment there or you're just trying to kind of speak to that person, right? And something that I've noticed I've done in the past, which I've corrected over time, but still see so many founders and actually, to be honest, anyone making this, these, these simple errors in how to get people to connect you to people, right? The number one thing that I see people doing uh, wrong is that you make the person do work for you, right? If you're asking for someone to do a favor for you, to connect you to someone that you don't know, make it as easy as possible for someone to connect you to someone, right? I'm gonna give you an example of like the worst error I always see, which is, you know, I, as you probably do all the time, get contacted by people who wanna connect me to people, right? Now, I had one the other day and they wrote to me and they said, hey, do you know any good FinTech startups? Firstly, like, what do you think? I'm just got some magical list. And oh yeah, one second, hold on. One F A B D C D E I F. Here we go. Fair fintech. Like I don't just have these magical companies off the top of my head. Especially if I'm not working in fintech all the time every day. You need to be more specific as well, right? So it, the best way to do is like go to someone with a specific ask, right? So like, hey, we're you know we need to speak to X at X company, right? Like we know you're connected. Would it be okay for you to connect us, right? So that's the first way to ask if it's okay. Now, what am I connecting you with? One of the best ways is to write a blanket email. So say for example, using the same one, you needed to see some fintech companies. You wanted to be connected to fintech companies, financial technology companies, right? You go, hey Matt, uh, we noticed you're connected to these three guys and girls at these three fintech companies. We're doing this event and we're trying to get CEOs to talk about the industry. Um, would you mind connecting us? Uh, and then sending me literally an email that I can forward. That's the easiest way to do it. Send me an email, make it as simple as possible. One line is if you can, be specific about what you want. Ask for what you want. People are only gonna say yes or no. Now, how to make people say yes. There's a, a really good book on convincing people to do you favors or to uh, help you out, connect you, whatever you're asking for. And the bottom line comes down to asking them to do you a favor. Most people, think that they are outgoing and supportive people, right? So the way you phrase your question is very important to how you get an answer that is positive towards what you want, right? So there's a book called Never Split the Difference. What's the author, Rufus? Chris Voss. Chris Voss, yes, exactly. I think he's got a masterclass. He's got a masterclass. We'll link it below. Chris Voss, that's the one. Anyway, in that book, he talks about the, you know, the art of negotiation and in that is getting people to say yes. Now, there's a way you can ask for a favor and this is that. You say to someone, there's flies flying around here. I opened the window, flies came in from Lisbon. All the Lisbon's flies live in my living room. I think flies only live for 24 hours though, so they'll die soon. Now I'll have a fly, fly graveyard, anyway. And this is how you do it. So this is a secret here. The way to do it is everyone hates to be told what to do. We're kind of born that way, I think, anti-authority. So if you tell someone to do something, typically they want to do the opposite. So if you ask someone in a way like this, you're probably far too busy and don't have time. But if you had, you know, but if, if there's just a chance you had five minutes for a meeting, I'd really appreciate it. You kind of make the person think, you know, I'll make the time. You can't, you know, I'm, you don't know me. I, I'm in control of my own life. It actually works. It may sound ridiculous, but try it. I've tried it at restaurants to get into like, get a table. Look, I know you guys are so busy. I uh, totally sympathize. It's crazy of us to walk in right now. But if there's any chance, you might be to squeeze four of us in just for like a quick hour. We, we would really appreciate it. That really works. All right, next section, booking meetings. Something that I always do is I actually, uh, I highlight in bold, if it's an email-based communication, the ask. So it's like, what am I asking for? Uh, and literally next steps in bold. I literally bold that and I have it like a bullet point underneath next steps. I suggest a time and a date. Always suggest if you have a chance to like suggest a time and a date to someone as you're the first person suggesting when to meet, always throw out an exact time and an exact day. And then also add, oh, we're also flexible after 2 p.m. for example, right? Because you 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 reduce the chances of back and forth, right? You, you reduce the chances that they're gonna go back to you and say, oh, I'm not available. And then you're gonna throw another date and then they're gonna have to do some work to figure out when they're available to accommodate something that they don't necessarily know they're getting any value from yet, right? So just make sure that you always go in there with the simple opportunity of getting one response back, send, respond with a calendar invite immediately. Always budget and book for less time. Um, people tend to, when they book meetings, they, they book in like 60 to 30 minute slots, right? So if you book someone in for like a 15 minute, 10 minute meeting, odds are they're not gonna book something afterwards. And odds are you buy yourself the opportunity that if they're enjoying it and they're getting value from it, they'll carry it on and then you'll actually get a lot more from it, right? It'll turn something that was a 10 minute meeting into a 30 minute meeting, right? 
often there are people you want to get hold of who you know have teams of people who manage their calendar they're either famous they're rich and successful they're just uh, you know they're a politician or whatever it might be right in these people's audience and fan bases i guarantee you 99.9 percent of that fan base and that audience base doesn't reach out to them apart from on social media basically so think outside the box if you want to get hold of this kind of high profile person of course they get a lot of inbound messages uh, mostly business related or whatever they do related um so think outside the box, send them a letter, send them a gift, send them a book, send them something that is out of the ordinary, not another thousandth email that day. Um, and another way to do that is remembering, you just need to ask. I've managed to get hold of some pretty cool people over the years simply because I asked and simply because I asked in a smart way. A lot of people are asking, ask differently. Give them something, gift them something. Uh, I'm not saying send them a, bake them a cake and send it, that's a bit crazy, but like, if you know they like something, or if you, you know, not, also don't have to spend a fortune, but you know, I did a book. Rufus, grab my book. Quickly, Rufus. Thank you. Yeah, Rufus is fighting back now, isn't he? I did this book, right? Now, I, I didn't do this book to make money. I did this as a kind of marketing stunt, to be honest with you. And I made the money back on the book after the first 500 was sold. Um, and I give it away now. This is the best marketing tactic I've ever created, right? I'm not suggesting that you go all go and create books now, but let me into, I'll let you into a secret, right? If you have a skill set, if you have a domain knowledge, there's a thing called Amazon Kindle Publisher. I didn't do it for my first book, but I've done it for the other two, where you don't need to have a publisher. These books are print on order. All you need to do is create beautiful PDFs and things like that. So if you, could, if you create something that's unique, send it to someone you want to get hold of. I mean, there's no better way to make an impression on someone and do something different than sending something that is unique, something you create created. Um, I know that's not possible for everyone, but get creative. Think about different things. And there's one point I want to make on this too also. When you're asking people to connect you to people, right? Just because they're connected doesn't mean that they're actually connected, right? Like, I mean, how many Facebook, Instagram friends, LinkedIn friends do you have that you've never met or hardly know? Be empathetic that the person you're asking to connect you um, might also want to use that contact at some point acknowledge that because I hate it when people sort of like, can you connect me to this person? I'm like, yeah, um, I mean, I, I know them, haven't seen them in five years. And actually right now I'm thinking about maybe contacting them about my own thing that I want to talk to them about in the next couple of weeks. And I'd rather not just connect them to some random now, which might not lead anywhere. You don't know, you have no control. And then you damage that connection for yourself. Having said that, if you're the one who's being asked to connect people, um, don't hold your special connections to your chest. The more people you help, uh, the more chances that you know, you have, you shouldn't look at it this way, but like they kind of owe you a favor in a way, or at least, you know, you, there's a social currency with, you know, you doing favors for people. Shouldn't look at it in that way for sure. I re 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 reiterate that point. But, um, you know, definitely try and help people if you can. I always try and help people if I can, but I will not help you if you come to me and ask me to do work for you, okay? I think we should call it because I'm very tired after a long week and you need to go and have a wonderful weekend. So thank you so much for watching this video. Wherever you are, you know what, right now, let me know in the comments if there's things we should improve on. If I need to speak slower, faster, more energy, less energy, uh, we'd really appreciate it. Um, Rufus, what do we say to everyone? See you next time. See you next time. Rufus, wave to everyone, come on. Yeah. There he is, yeah. Yeah. Give, give it away. Oh, there you go. Yeah. See you in the next video, thanks so much, bye.